HL does not contain any general rule providing for its geographical scope. Such a silence raises many unsettled issues on the matter. The most widely held view is that HL applies to the entirety of the states involved in the conflict. This view may be named as the territorial approach. In 1995, the ICTY asserted in that sense that international humanitarian law applies in the whole territory of the warring states, or in the case of internal conflicts, the whole territory under the control of a party. However, this territorial approach does not mean that HL is applicable to any incident occurring in the territory of the state concern. At an abstract level, HL may apply in any part of the territory in question. In the concrete case, HL only applies to acts linked to the armed conflict. In other words, a nexus must be established between the act and the conduct of hostilities. Otherwise, the act will not be regulated by IHL. Certain rules of IHL, mainly those related to detention, expressly require such a nexus in order to be applicable. It is clear that the, the existence of the necessary nexus does not raise any problem with respect to acts performed in the battlefield. In that sense, it is generally held that IHL obviously applies to the actual hostilities or the theater of war or the battlefield areas, although there is no specific definition of those expressions under IHL. However, in practice, fighting may only take place in a limited number of localized theaters of operation, with the greater part of the relevant state only being indirectly affected by the armed conflict. The nexus requirement will play a crucial role in that regard for distinguishing between the acts regulated by IHL, when the nexus is established, and those acts only regulated by other relevant law, including domestic law or human rights law, when the nexus is not established. That having been said, we must remember that even if IHL is applicable to acts or person outside of the battlefield, when they are linked to the armed conflict, IHL will not necessarily apply. This could be possible in situations where a different regime of international law, in particular human rights law, is also applicable and may displace the application of IHL. In order to illustrate this point, let's again consider the situation concerning targeting by a state within a region of its territory that it firmly controls, but where no active hostilities are taking place. We have already seen in the first chapter of this book, when addressing the relationship between IHL and human rights law, that there are different views on which law, although both applicable, will apply to such targeting. And one of these views is that only human rights apply, displacing the application of the IHL paradigm. 